Hello CodeGrid folks. Welcome to today's tutorial, where I'll walk you through creating a captivating card hover animation using pure CSS. With just a few lines of CSS, we'll bring these cards to life with just a couple 3D transforms. Remember to hit that like button to support the video and help others discover this content. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe to stay tuned for more creative tutorial. So, let's jump right in and get started. Alright, let's kick things off by creating our container. Inside that container, we'll have a div with the class header and add an h1 with some catchy text. Next up, we need a space to hold our cards, so we'll create a div with the class name cards where we'll place our individual cards. Each card will consist of three children elements. The first child will be card background, serving as the card's background with some text to complement the design. The second child will be card CTA, and it will hold the text tab to read, enticing users to interact with the card. The third child, card foreground, will have the main content, including the card description and the review itself. This is where all the exciting stuff happens. Now, let's add the client logo. We'll create a div with the class name logo and insert an image tag inside it. Let's copy the entire card and create a duplicate. And there you have it. Let's dive into the CSS wizardry and bring life to our cards. Before we get into the exciting part, I've already taken the liberty of defining all the colors we'll be using throughout the video. Just to make the recording process much smoother, we'll begin by targeting all the elements removing any default margins and paddings. We'll also set the box sizing to border box. We'll start by targeting the body element and set its width and height to fill the viewport. Additionally, we'll apply the Acid Grotesque font family for the desired typography. Next, we'll target the container and set its width and height to 100% to make it occupy the entire available space. We'll apply a background color. We'll harness the power of Flexbox with Display Flex and center the content both horizontally and vertically within the container. Flex Direction column allows us to stack the header and cards neatly with some right amount of gap. For the header, we'll style it with a white color, give it a font size of 30 pixel, font weight of 500, and do the center alignment. The card's container will have Display Flex so that we have the cards arranged side by side with some gap. To ensure our layout looks polished even on smaller window sizes, we'll implement the media queries earlier. We'll target the body element and set its height to 100%. For the container element, we'll add some padding of 10m at the top and bottom and set its height to max content, allowing it to adjust dynamically based on the content inside. The cards will have flex direction column, so they will stack on top of each other on mobile. Now, let's focus on the key element, the card. We'll set the width to 300 pixels and the height to 420 pixels. We'll give the card rounded corners using border radius 10 pixel. To introduce depth and a sense of 3D space, we'll set the perspective property to 14 pixel. Let's also set cursor to pointer. Now, let's shift our focus to the background element. We will set its position absolute. For a perfect fit, we'll set its width and height to 100%. We'll apply padding of 1M to the element and set the background color. Let's add rounded corners here too. We'll set the transform origin to left top, setting the reference point for the element's transformation. For the background text, let's set the color of the text to white, set the opacity to 0.5, font size to 8 pixel, and font weight to 600. We will also set text transform to uppercase and set letter spacing to 2 pixel. For the CTA card, we'll use position absolute, with right zero and bottom zero, aligning it to the bottom right corner. Set its width and height to 75%. Add a gradient at the A background and a border of 1 pixel, and border radius to 10 pixels. We'll also add transition with 0.5 seconds. For the CTA text, we will position it absolute top 20% and right zero to position it in the top right corner. Using transform, we will rotate it 90 degree. To style it, we will set its color to white, font size to 10 pixel, font weight to 600, text transform uppercase, and letter spacing to two pixel. Now it's time to style the front card. We will again position it absolute, set its width and height to 100% and add padding of 2M. Let's add a radial gradient as background and we will also set backdrop filter to blur of 25 pixel. Give it a border of 1px and set the border radius to 10 pixels again. Set the color white for the content inside. 
To enable 3D transformations, we'll use Transform Style Preserve 3D, ensuring the element maintains its 3D position in space. We'll set the transform origin to left top, setting the reference point for the element's transformation, then set transition to 0.5 seconds. Adding basic styles to case study text, giving margin bottom 2M, font size of 10 pixels, font weight to 500, text transform to uppercase, and again letter spacing of 2 pixels. For the review copy, we will only set the font size to 22 pixels. For the client logo, we will again use position absolute and move it towards bottom. Give a fixed width of 125 pixels and height of 100 pixels. For the logo image, set its width and height to 100%, and do not forget to set object fit as contained so that the image fits within the full width and height available. When hovering over the card element, we'll apply a transformation to the card CTA element first, moving it 40 pixels to the right and rotate it 7 degrees along the Z-axis. We'll also transform the foreground element, transform, rotating it 40 degrees along the Y-axis. This transformation will bring the front-facing part of the card to life in 3D visually engaging rotation effect. With these hover transformations in place, our card hover animation is now complete. Thank you for joining in. To access the source code for each tutorial, consider subscribing to the Pro Membership. You'll find the link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.